Greetings, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and in it we'll demonstrate how we've set up the Mystery Dawson experience, also known as the Simpsons 4 player fix, so you can fully utilize your native Simpsons controls in RetroArch and many other enjoyable apps. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. I also wish to point out that this controller fix is a software fix and not a mod. In fact, it doesn't come with any games, it has no ROMs, and this fix is intended to work with RetroArch, standalone emulators and other apps. It's also important to note that this control fix will not be fully compatible with repacked and re-edited arcade 1UP APK files that many of us have seen and used in the past, as those APK files use the original controller's software and configurations. For this project, we'll be installing this fix from a Windows PC. I'll be using a wireless USB keyboard and mouse combo. I recommend this option as it'll only use one USB port on the PCB and you don't have additional power draw from a USB hub. You'll also need a micro USB cable, and I do recommend getting a good quality cable for this as we'll be using the cable to install this software, and as we'll not be installing it from an SD card like the other apps and APKs you've seen in past videos. If you need any of these items, please find affiliate links in the description of the recommended items I use. I do wish to be transparent and inform you that this channel will get a small commission if you choose to buy from these links, and those commissions will go to supporting this channel. Thank you. With all of that said, let's get started. The very first thing that I'll be doing is taking off the back panel of my Simpsons cab, and I'll be locating the USB port for my keyboard and mouse combo, and I'll locate the micro USB port on the PCB. Once I've found both, I'll insert the USB keyboard and mouse combo, and I'll insert my micro USB cable into each of the correlating slots. However, I will not be turning on the Simpsons cab as of yet. With my cab turned off and my keyboard and cabling plugged in, let's move over to my laptop for our next few steps. We'll first head to the Team Encoder website, where the Mystery Dawson's control fix can be found, and we're presented with the following warnings. This will wipe out your cabinet if you have mods already. They will be cleared and the cabinet will be reverted to stock. This is the only time we should need to do this. Future updates should not be necessary. This automatically enables ADB, so you do not need to turn developer options on, despite the UI showing it as off. This does not include ROMs, cores for RetroArch, emulators, a front end, or anything else. This is not to mod your cabinet. You can use the standard methods already made available by the community to modify your cabinet and install RetroArch, Moonlight, N64 emulators, etc. This simply makes four player controls work properly in these applications. Trackball will work in the stock Simpsons bowling game as expected, but it will not work in other apps in this version. Download the 7-zip archive from above. Extract the files to a directory not on your desktop, preferably. Run mysterydawsonexperience.exe then run step 1 to install drivers. If you've already done fighter droids in the past, you don't need to do this step. Run step 2, which is to install the Simpsons control fix on your PCB, by connecting the micro USB cable to the micro USB port on your Simpsons cab while it is powered off. Next turn your Simpsons on. If you hear the ding, then it is connecting to your PC, and next the application successfully verifies that it is indeed a Simpsons PCB. Then reboot your Simpsons cab when it asks to, and when done, you can install RetroArch's RetroArch config.apk for automatic control configurations. Some manual configurations are still required, like disabling overlay or setting a hotkey for bringing up the menu live button, which you can bind, but only to player 1. My first step will be to begin the download by going to the Team Encoder website and clicking on the mega file link there. As soon as it's finished downloading, I'll extract it to a location that's easy for me to get to and keep track of. With everything downloaded and extracted, let's locate our file, run the executable, and get the PCB drivers installed on my computer. This does not take long, and if you've done this before, you can skip this step. Now that step 1 has been completed, we can move on to step 2, which entails installing the Simpsons control fix on your PCB. To do this, 
Connect the micro USB cable to the micro USB port located on your Simpsons cab while the cabinet is in the powered off position. Power up your Simpsons cab when you hear the dinging of the PC connecting, and then wait for the program to give further instructions once it has finished connecting. The program will first read the PCB. It will then verify the PCB is in fact from a Simpsons cab. You will need to quickly toggle the power on your Simpsons cab when the program instructs you to do so. Next, the system will start to patch the firmware, and in truth, most everything from here is automated. We simply follow the instructions when prompted to do so. The program will now rewrite the data as needed, and this section will take some time. I will be speeding this part up. After all, no one wants to wait when we have the power of video editing at our fingertips. In this next section, I'm going to slow the video back down to real time, as I want you to see how my cab acts and interacts with the program. This way if you choose to make use of this fine control fix, you'll know what to expect when patching your PCB board. The program will now reboot our Simpsons cab without our need to interact with it. This is a normal part of the fix. You'll also get a message letting you know what to do if you don't get a pop-up message to interact with on your Simpsons cab, or if things get locked up. Next, we'll get a pop-up window on our Simpsons cab that we'll need to interact with by enabling the required fields and telling the cab to move forward with our intended course. The program will continue with the automated installation. Again, I want to do this section of the video in real time so you'll have an idea of what to expect if you choose to throw caution to the wind. For me, with the hardware I am using, this section took about 1 minute and 30 seconds. Everyone's time will vary, as each of us will be using different computers with different specs. To give you an idea, I am using an i5 12th generation at 2 GHz with 16 gigs of RAM. Once you see the program display say, we're done here, you know the program has been successfully installed and you're ready to rock and roll. I'll now get my keyboard out and connect to Wi-Fi, and I'll update the cab once again with the stock software update. After the cab is finished with the update, I'll also test and verify that all stock programs work as intended. I do want to point out that after I've done any mods to my system, I did notice I was no longer able to make my initial connection to my Wi-Fi from the stock Simpsons interface, and I now have to connect with a keyboard to make the initial Wi-Fi connection. However, after that, everything works without issue. This seems to be an issue with any cab I've modified, regardless of the type of soft modification done to it, and I haven't a clue as to why. If you have any thoughts regarding this, let me know in the comments. In conclusion, this was really easy to do and was very self-automated. If you'd like to be able to use RetroArch or other third-party emulators with your Simpsons cab but still be able to play and use your stock arcade 1UP software, then this control fix can help you. I'll also be installing the pre-configured copy of RetroArch, and I'll be moving as many ROMs as I can to my cab, but I think we'll leave that for another video. With that in mind, I do wish to thank you for checking out this video, and I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, then please help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video, leaving me a comment below, or sharing this video with a friend. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. These are all small clicks for you.
but they mean the world to this little channel. Thank you.